How's everybody doing? You guys doing good? All right. Um, we don't have much time. Um, I, I really, I really want to uh, just first off, just thank Steve for coming out. Steve, thank you. Steve, Steve could go like, um, we, we always try to snatch you when you come around. And so we snatched him. We always try to snatch you around VOA or something like that. But um, if it, he, doesn't, he doesn't have to come here. I just think he likes us. He likes us a lot. So he comes here. And uh, he could certainly go to a bigger venue, but like, we are just very excited to have you in here. We're going to be passing baskets just for a love offering for Steve. If you'd like to contribute to that, you can. Now, if I was young and I heard a pastor say this, I would be thrilled. I, I have a, a five to seven minute sermon for you guys. And I, I would be like, I would stand, I'd start yelling hallelujah. But um, I, the, the reason is, is because as a family, we get together uh, twice a year and we do a family meeting. The reason we do that is because we, we like our members to be fully informed about what we're doing on staff. We don't want anybody to miss out on any kind of communication. Um, one of the things that some, some people ask me is like, hey, I'm not a member. Do you mind if I, I hear what it is that you guys are talking about at the family meeting? I, I really don't mind if you really want to be informed and you feel like I'd like to hear what you guys are doing, what the inner workings are of praise. Um, you could certainly stick around for that. Um, if you're you know, 14, year old, 14 years old and you don't like sermons, you can leave right after that if you would like. All right. First off, let me just, uh, just thank you guys for, for being here this morning. And, and those of you who are guests, welcome. We're glad that you're here. Again, this is not a uh, traditional sort of Sunday morning, but we're going to do the best we can. One of the things that I just wanted to, to do with you guys this morning is, again, just revisit the, the vision here of Praise Community Church. Um, we're, we're, not, we're not a, let me say this. Our goal is not that, that you would go to church, but it's that you guys would be the church in everything that you are. And one of the things that Jesus Christ did is he went around and he destroyed the works of the devil, according to 1 John. Did you guys know that? You can't, you can't bring the kingdom of heaven without destroying the works of the devil. The two are almost tied together. And that's why he mentions it in 1 John when talking about it. And he's also referencing sin. Did you guys know that the majority of people are, offer, are, are often Christians who are suffering because they don't understand. They know that Jesus Christ has forgiven them, that he died on their behalf of their sins, but they still don't yet understand that Jesus Christ died to remove the sinful nature. So people are, are perishing and actually destroying their lives because they haven't had a conversation with you yet. Right. You guys know that? Right. And, and so please hear me when I say this. One conversation from you can literally change the course of a genealogy of somebody and his family because they had a conversation with you and you were able to share with them what the good news actually is and actually how big it is. Are you guys hearing me on that? Um, I, I was a United Methodist, went to a United Methodist growing up, so I'm a Methodist kid. Let me just read a quote from John Wesley for you. It says, give me 100 preachers who fear nothing but sin and desire nothing but God. And I care not a straw whether they be clergymen or laymen. Such alone will shake the gates of hell and set up the kingdom of heaven on earth. Is that quote familiar? It sits right there in the men's bathroom when you walk in on the quote wall. Have you guys seen it? You guys read all those quotes? In the men's bathroom, we have a quote wall. I don't think the women have one. You guys have flowers. A um, hundred people who have decided that... Um, that they're going to bear fruit and they're going to destroy the work of the enemy and the people's lives around them and they're actually going to be like Christ isn't some far-fetched idea. It's the reason why he died, so he believes that it's possible. You guys hearing that? And our, our, our mission and how we're going to do that is we're going to, to know his word, we're going to hear his voice, and we're going to do his will as individuals and as, as a corporate body. Um, what makes us different than other churches is that we don't stop we don't stop like, I, I, I'm sorry, I just hate this kind of Christianity. I'm doing okay, therefore I'm okay. You, you guys understand what I'm saying? The goal of Christianity isn't for you to be okay, it's that you'd be like a hell crusher. And you're not okay until everybody around you has hell crushed in their lives. And you put a stop to it, because you know how to do it. You're not perishing for a lack of information. You know what the gospel says, you know what he's done for you. You're able to apply it, and so you're able to crush hell around you. Brian referred to the parable of the sower. He referred to the seeds. There's, there's, not this, there's only two options. You die or you bear fruit, right? You either die or you bear fruit. There's not this third option where your roots are a little deep enough that you don't get uh, scorched 
and you have enough leaves that you survive, and you're, you're, you're doing okay. You're not bearing fruit, but you're just sort of surviving, and it's okay. It doesn't exist. Do you guys hear me? So our goal, our goal is not to perish, it's to bear fruit. To bear fruit means to be like Christ. And 1 John's very clear, a very sobering book, if you guys want to go ahead and revisit it. Read 1 John, not under the lens of condemnation, but under the lens of possibility. If he's saying, I can do this, if he's telling me to do this, there's a grace to actually do what it is that he's saying. If he's saying, he says something like this, if you can't love your brother, then you don't know me. I know him, I must be able to love everyone. You guys see it? And when you see that and you live that and you crush hell around you and you bear that fruit, it's what you were made for. It's what he died for. And like Brian said, you can't do that unless you spend time in prayer. How many of you guys have ever read the verse that says the repentance of God, that, I'm sorry, um, it's the goodness of God that leads to repentance. Everybody quotes that as if when someone's in sin, we just need to be ultra nice to them, Right? What it's saying is this, if you as an individual focus on the goodness of God and praise him and give him glory, your mind will change. That's what the verse in the context is. So we're not ditching our devotion for a mission. We are devoted and letting that devotion grow up in us so that we can accomplish the mission. I thought of this as a vision statement. I don't know if you guys love it, but love God, crush hell. How's that sound? That's a very cool bumper sticker. And I like it. We'll vote on that later. <laughs> Love God, crush hell. And so let me just, just wrap things up here for you guys. I'm not okay in my life with anything less than being a minister, not just to you guys, but outside of the church, making sure that I'm ministering to people who need to know him, who, who have needs, who are just, just perishing just for a little bit of lack of knowledge. I, there's only three or four things I know, and you guys hear me preach on them every week, right? It's just, just these little things that just people are just missing, they don't understand, they completely set their life on fire for the Lord. And um, let me just, just this, I'm actually going to wrap it up. If you guys don't, um, you guys have heard me say this, there's no freedom on the fringe of a church. There is no freedom on the fringe of a church. Brian and I tried to be on the fringe of a church when we went to seminary. There was no freedom in it. You need to give yourself, you need to give yourself up to actually be free. It is very easy to give myself up here for you guys. You guys make it super easy, Right? But until you give up self, you can't be free, and you can't crush hell, and you can't bear fruit. Amen? So let's, in this new year, decide that you're going to be one of these hundred people that are going to crush hell and escort the kingdom of heaven in. And let me just say this while, while I have everybody in there. How many of you guys have done Brian's school, his prophetic school? That... Uh, yeah. The way that I've seen Brian do that school and the results and the testimonies, he's, he's crushing hell in individuals. Hell is getting crushed and these mindsets are just getting crushed in people. God is going to use you guys mightily. And I'm very excited to see what happens with, with everybody who's done that school. And if you haven't done that school yet, next August rolls around. Make sure you guys sign up for it. It's just incredible. In saying that, um, will you guys just stand for me? We're going to bless Steve and thank him for coming out. So extend a hand towards Steve. Amen. <clears throat> Sonny. So, Father, we thank you for Steve. We bless him. We bless his ministry. Lord, uh, we pray that in heaven he's just got a 24-7 worship thing going that we could go see. And so we thank you for that, Lord, and um, his, his family and, and, and his work and his ministry. I ask that, that, that more, more uh, manifestations would happen in his worship, that that you would show up more, that you would just give more freedom and just bind up broken hearts when he's worshiping you, God. And we just bless him, and we thank you so much for him. And I just bless this congregation, Lord. I ask, Lord, that this year ground would be gained, that, that everybody in here who knows people, who need to know you, Lord, that courage would rise up, and that courage would overtake people, God, and that, that they would be the ones that they would go, and they would give what it is that is needed, 
because they no longer live for themselves. Lord, they live for you because that old thing that you, that you killed when you were crucified, you took our old nature away from us. So we thank you for that. Now that we can live anew, destroy every mindset that stands against that in our minds. In Jesus' name, amen.